Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we're chatting with Virginia Poltrak. Hello, Virginia. Hi, Chuki. Uh, where are you based, and what do you do? So I'm from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It's a small town in western Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I am an illustrator slash designer. Great. And how did you get started on Android? Um, so I actually started using Android after I got Google Glass. Oh. So the I other way, usually people get Android first and then get Google Glass. Right, so I'm, yeah. I did it a little bit backwards, but I also have to admit I had everything Apple before that. And it's I okay. got Glass. A lot of designers I know uh, right? have use Apple products. Apple, yeah. So um, I got Glass and then I got an Android phone and then by that point I just sort of got sucked into the community and then because the, we are awesome you, you I have to agree with yeah. that <laughs> so the more work i did the more sort of stuff i got involved with and it turned mm -hmm. into like glassware and watch faces and everything else and now i'm just a full-fledged android um evangelist i guess maybe. yay <laughs> cool and the reason why i know virginia actually there's an interesting story because what happened was um I was looking at the Google Fit API and one day I decided that, oh, it'd be awesome if I can have a watch face that also uses Google Fit. Uh, this idea I posted on Google Plus and asking my friends, like, do, do anyone of you know a good illustrator? I need to have some cute cats drawn. I didn't say a word about watch face. And then our mutual friend Macy mm -hmm. said, I have to meet Virginia. At that point, we're just, we were just working on cute cats. And then I look at her profile, I was like, oh, she does so many watch faces. At that point, I haven't done any watch face yet, so like it worked out really well. And it did. And, and we worked so fast too, because like I was, um, I got that idea in May, and I really wanted to launch it before IO. So it, it ended was... up being a couple days, I think. Yeah. And I remember working on it and thinking like, this is awesome because she's excited about this as I am, and this is so much fun to do. And yeah. it was. Like, I just loved working on it. So that. if you Don't have not heard out. about FitCat yet, you should definitely check it out. We'll put a note in the show notes. Uh, so the interesting thing about FitCat, I felt like, was um, the way we communicated about how to make it work. Because, like, initially, I feel like my idea was that I want a different cat doing different things. And so far, your, your watch faces from that point on was still... Um, Oh, I want to choose the octopus. Oh, I want yeah. to choose. So you have multiple watch faces bundled in the same app, but they are very discreet. The user have to make a decision to choose them. Mm -hmm. Versus my idea was will automatically. It's a cat. I mean, the cat does different thing. You don't tell the cat to play with the yarn. It That's just does true. it. Um, so that took a little bit of communication. That was interesting. But you know what? You did a lot of things that made my job easier. So for mm -hmm. example. Um, I know you had compiled a list of activities, right. which made it easier for me. And then I also was able to think like, okay, this is sort of the scope of what we're doing. Right. And like, this is how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And I think you also sent a bunch of examples, like here are the things that I have oh. in mind. So like for me, yeah. that made it a lot easier because I immediately was able to understand like what you were trying to do. Like, okay, let's make it happen. Do you remember the, the noodle cat? Oh, yeah. Well, and then that's the other thing that makes yeah. me really happy because I feel like you were very honest about, like, here's what this looks like. Here's a good example of it. And again, that makes it much easier so the, for me. The audience doesn't know about the noodle cat, so I'm going to explain what happened. Uh, so one of the action I want was the cat be eating. And she came up with the noodle cat, which at the very first version, the noodle cat was holding a bowl of noodles and then eating like that. And I was like... No. This doesn't look right to me. I'm not quite sure. And then I got it. it because I eat noodles with chopsticks. That's and what it was. And she was totally yeah. on board. She was like, yeah, chopsticks. That's, that's not makes sense. And then she went back and made a chopsticks version. And then sent it to me. And then I looked and I was like, okay, this is pretty good. And I, but I think there was still, like, I have still a little bit problem with like the placement of the noodles. I yeah. was getting really particular about like the placement of the noodles. And I could not for the life of me explain what I want the noodle to do. And I actually draw it out, which you like, did. I did not really, I don't really draw well, but I just want to convey the idea how I want the noodle. I was trying to explain it in words. Like, I want it to look like a waterfall and like it like, comes this way and like, it didn't work. So I just like draw some horrible sketch and send it over. She's like, 
that Thank did. God it. But that's and then five the stuff minutes later, you got the beautiful done. version. Like, like I really like the way like we communicated. Like, I agree that way. with that. Yeah. But I think those small details like that take something and and makes it from like, oh, that's cute, or like that's a good idea to like right. that's perfect, and like that's yeah. the stuff that's important to do. I think to yeah. think about those little details and get them right. So like, I love that you were mm-hmm. cognizant of that and that we were working really hard on that right. because to me that's. So um, I, I want to kind of get a little bit deeper on that too because I feel like a lot of the times like us developer kind of live in the developer cave <laughs> and like a lot of the times when we try to communicate to designers and other people there's a lot of frustration over oh you know I don't I, I, I don't want it to look like that but then people cannot express themselves right. you know what I mean like do you have kind of what kind of feedback do you find more useful like what kind of detail make your job easier? So it might sound a little bit strange. I mm-hmm. think a little bit, it depends on the person. Oh, okay. Like, so for example, I've known you for a while now. We've worked mm-hmm. together. So right. I feel like at this point, if you were to describe something to me with words, I know you well enough that I would say, like, I know what she's trying to say. Right. Um, but especially if I'm working with someone I've never done a project with right. before or we're having trouble, like, I will always say, just send me images. It doesn't have to be exactly what you're working towards but Mm. we're trying to use words to make pictures and it's easier to just use pictures to make pictures if that makes sense so i guess like what i did was i send you a sketch but i guess what other people may do is send you other images that they find on the internet in this style exactly like see how they did this part or see how this solution is working or these colors or whatever so show instead of tell exactly uh, find some examples and and, and we that. can work with that yeah that's great visual learning yeah <laughs> yeah so like that worked out really well because i've actually tried to work with other designers and it was very frustrating because i would do the same kind of like level of detail and they mm. would just ignore it and they just send back whatever they want to me and that was not communication. No. So I'm glad that you're receptive of all, all my nitty gritty little details. That is, we should yeah. add too, it's not just, um, I, I feel like each of the cat activities, mm-hmm. like um, there's fencing cat, right. and we would talk about, oh, yeah, well, yeah, like, about how the pivot does, point. The yeah. feather in the cap, and yeah. like how does that move? Like there was a lot of detail and thought that yeah. went into that, yeah. which is great. I, well, I see, think that's awesome. I'm just so happy that you are also on board with, because I was like, you can call it nitpicking, complaining, but I was, no, no, no. I was like, the feather need to move on a pivot point, not like right. this. That's not nitpicking though, like yeah. that's what makes it like perfect and that's what yeah. we want. And I'm, so. I'm glad that you, rather than like, oh, you know, she's just so oh, bossy she's, and tell no. me to do things, you were like, oh no this is great like, and then you send me the version and then yep. and then it was done so like that was that was really good i'm i'm hoping that other people will also get that kind of experience working with yep. their designer that you can get that dialogue going i feel I like so they should yeah. that's a valid point yeah. like you should be able to have a discussion for, and for some reason people think of like coding and design like two different things and actually a lot of the times i feel like like attention to detail yeah. and things like that it this is not two different things um, so actually, I also want to pick your brain on um, getting better at designing and just having paying attention to not necessarily details, but for me, for example, I feel like I started maybe five years ago when okay. I decided that I want to be more than just writing code. I want to understand what makes a good app. So I was trying to learn, well, Photoshop, which to this day, I still only know how to do layers and drop shadow. But that's good enough. To be fair, <laughs> Photoshop can be very intimidating. Oh, yeah. So don't, um... The very first time I used Photoshop, I was with a friend because I could not find where the bucket to drop the okay. paint. And she had to tell me to long press on the gradient because it's hiding behind. Yeah, that's not very intuitive. I mean, how, how am I supposed to know that this button is hiding behind another button? Yeah, that's not very yeah. intuitive. So so I, I learned really, really simple um, Photoshop things. But then my friend also showed me how to make a good color palette because yeah. I have not studied color theory. And then she was like, you don't need to. There are tools like that. So maybe you can share with us a few kind of go-to tools that you use to help you come up with like good design? Yeah, I think there's a couple things that anybody can do regardless of how much experience right. you have with design or apps mm-hmm. or anything like that. And um, it sounds really silly, but to be <laughs> honest, what is an app that you like, that mm-hmm. you think looks good, right. and what is working? Is mm-hmm. it 
the colors that they use? Is it the font that they used? Is it the amount of space? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, actions? And it, and it sounds silly, but like, I bet even listening to that, people would think, oh, I, I have an app that I love right. for that reason. Well, but at least like you list the things to pay attention to, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. when you don't have the vocabulary, you look at an app and say, it's great, but you cannot pinpoint why. But now we have a yeah. checklist, like take a closer look at the colors, take a closer look at the spacing yep. and the fonts to see what makes it What's working. good. And yeah. it's also interesting because a lot of that stuff, I think you don't notice um, if it is working, but you mm -hmm. notice when it's not, not working. working. Yeah. And then it's like glaringly it's obvious. Yeah, I remember when I first started doing that, my designer friend was showing me how the text lined up with the mm -hmm. image. Yep. Before he told me that, I never paid attention. After he told me I, that, I cannot small unsee thing, but, yep. it. Like when things don't line up, then I was like, they, they, they don't line up. Now I can see and it. And it drives you crazy yeah. when you see it, right? Yeah. But that's what I think um, so many of those material design resources are great because mm. it's like, here, let's take a lot of the guesswork out right. of this and, and show you some good examples of how you can get started. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be you know, a big intimidating thing. You know thing. what? I think it would be great to combine the two things you said. Take an app you like and then go through the material design mm -hmm. and one by one and just notice how they implement right. like the guidelines. Because guidelines are just guidelines, right? You still have to interpret it a little bit, yep. right? If they talk about, oh, you know, use a strong color for your brand, and then you go to an app and then say, oh, it's pink, right? right? Like that, that actually makes it concrete. I agree with that. Yeah. I think that's good advice. and it. And it is, I know it sounds like such a simple thing, but right. I mean, really, that's what I do. If, if, mm -hmm. if somebody hires me and says, like, we want you to do this, and it's something I've never done before, mm -hmm. I will go research and, um, yeah. you know, how, who solved this problem and how did they solve it right. and what can I learn from that? Yeah, so. that's great. Cool. So we'll put all those things in the show notes so people can follow up. Yes, and check cool. them out. Cool. Um, I would love to talk a bit more, but we try to keep these things short and sweet. We can go on all yeah, day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But Virginia posts a lot of artwork. So if people want to go check them out, where can they find your um, artwork? There are a bunch of examples on virginiapoltrack.com, mm -hmm. which has links to all my social media profiles. Right. And um, she's really active on Twitter and Google Plus as well. So we'll, yes. we'll put it in the show notes. Great, this is so much fun. Thank you I'm for so having glad me. That you come here. <laughs> Yay. Bye. Bye bye.